Armada Kickoff is brought to you by Community First Credit Union, Win Dixie, Baptist Health, Bowden Eye and Associates, Brumos Automotive, and Coastal Spine and Paint Center. Hello and welcome into Armada Kickoff, another installment here. We have a lot of Armada news to get to, including revisiting Bob's Boot Room to take a closer look at tactical formations. We'll also discuss the season and the expectations this year with our panel of analysts and we get up close and personal with one of the guys expected to be scoring the goals for the Armada this year, former Premier League striker Jamal Johnson. And the first game is 15 days away for the Armada FC against MLS opponent Philadelphia Union. This game is right around the corner with the team training hard to prepare themselves and we now know the Armada's preseason, spring and fall schedules. But we start with breaking news. The Armada have finalized what may be their most significant player signing thus far. Marcos Flores is 29 comes from the Australian A-League. He was player of the year there in 2011 with Adelaide. He's from Argentina originally, also played in the top league in Chile, a brief stint in China. His goals have tended to be rather spectacular. It was a bit of a surprise for those down under that Flores would leave, but he tweeted out this week that he's looking forward to joining the dream that is the Jacksonville Armada. Here are some of Flores' numbers, 131 appearances across all competitions, 21 goals in league play. He was the A-League Player of the Year in 2011 and scored the A-League Goal of the Year in 2013. The schedule has the Armada playing three preseason matches in Jacksonville. First, against the Philadelphia Union of the MLS. The inaugural match is February 7th at Everbank Field. Then, on February 28th, the Fort Lauderdale Strikers come into town. That match we played on the home pitch of the Armada at Community First Park at the baseball grounds. This is the first time ever that a soccer field will be seen at the grounds. Then on March 8th, the Charleston Battery of the USL come to town to wrap up the preseason slate. The spring schedule was announced last month, so all that was left was the fall schedule for the Armada. And Jacksonville will begin the fall with three straight games away from home. They're at Ottawa on the 4th of July, then at Atlanta and Minnesota United, a club featuring U.S. men's national team player Miguel Ibarra. The other fall highlights include a July 18th visit to New York to face the Cosmos, and then Ibarra and Minnesota United come calling on August the 1st. All right, here are some of the other key dates in the fall. August 22nd and 29th, it's a home-and-home -home series with the defending NASL champion San Antonio Scorpions. Then, September the 26th, this should be a good one, Tampa Bay Rowdies come to town. This is expected to be a rivalry match for sure, as is Fort Lauderdale, the other Florida team. Fort Lauderdale was a finalist last year, and the November 1st match is the final regular season fixture in the NASL schedule. And just a reminder that season tickets are on sale right now, starting at $10 a match, and you have two options there, 20-game or 16-game packages that can be paid over time using the interest-free low monthly payment plan. All season ticket owners will get invitations to exclusive Armada FC events where they can meet coaches and players, and three-year charter crew members will get their names engraved on a personalized plank at the stadium. Call one 844 armada or visit armadafc.com. And as we mentioned, the opening match for the Armada will be against the Union, and one of their midfielders, Danny Cruz, was in town this past week. Cole caught up with Cruz to get his thoughts on this February 7th matchup. All right, thank you, Christy. Well, Danny, you're back in Jacksonville. Philadelphia Union has played here now. This will be the third time. Uh, uh, you've enjoyed your, your experience here in Jacksonville? Uh, every year. Every year it's, it's been an enjoyable experience. Continue to get good crowds, uh, a great stadium great great field and uh, and the fans are always first class so excited to be here yeah, and you'll play against a team that you have no you have nothing to go off of right you can start making some guesses but how do you prepare for the armada they haven't played a game either yeah it's going to be a little different um, i think the key is to focus on ourselves first and if we do the things that we know we have to do we can come out and, and be successful but um, excited to be a part of it obviously and uh, looking forward to a challenge that's for sure obviously the armada wants to win they want to have a good performance and they want a result uh, our performance and result both uh, important for Philadelphia? Yeah, you know what? The, the performance, I think, is, is key. Um, but we want to win. You don't play any game without wanting to win. That's how we get to where we are today. Um, and we have competitive players on our team, I can assure you that. So we're excited about it. We're, we're looking forward to it. And hopefully can come out with our first win of the preseason. I want your perspective on Jacksonville as a soccer city from the outside. Uh, what have you seen and, and uh, are people recognizing what's happening in Jacksonville in soccer? 
Yeah, listen, I've seen it continue to grow. Um, there's no doubt about it. Every year we come back here, every year it gets better, and uh, and it's it's only going to do the same with this new club. Um, it's going to hopefully take things to a new height here in the city, and um, the city's fortunate to have Armada, and Armada's fortunate to have the city. And what do you make of the influx of players who have been playing internationally, playing overseas, coming to MLS? Uh, some from the U.S. National Team, Josie Altador, uh, some Got, you know, mixed disc root as well. You get guys like Frank Lam uh, Lampard and uh, Steven Gerrard, and recently uh, Toronto signed a, a guy in his prime from Juventus. So, uh, are we seeing a trend here? I think so. I think you're starting to see people that are respecting the league a little bit more. The the minute that you can get these players that are in their prime, that are a little bit younger, um, and pay the money that that the league is investing in, um, it's only going to get better. The standards only going to go up. Uh, and listen, we're excited to have all of them. Um, I certainly can tell you just from, from being able to be on the same field as a Thierry Henry or a Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, those are names that you grow up watching. Um, and now I'm going to be able to play against them and, and hopefully get a few wins, and that's, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Danny, thanks a lot. We look forward to February the 7th. Thanks for having me. Tickets for the inaugural match are on sale right now from as low as $10 each. You may also want to check out the Family 4-Pack, which includes four tickets and a $10 voucher for concessions. All for just $48. You can get your tickets by calling 844-2-ARMADA or online at armadafc.com. The Armada hope Jamal Johnson will find the net against Philly. He's a well-traveled goal scorer, as Christy Andauer discovered. At 29 years of age, Jamal Johnson is one of the most experienced players on the Armada roster. But it's not just his age or 11 years as a pro that feed that experience. At the age of five, the New Jersey-born son of a Jamaican mother and American father moved to Manchester in England, and it didn't take long for folks in the UK to recognize Johnson's talents. I, I sort of got involved when I was eight or nine years old and started training with Manchester United at a very young age. And, um, you know, it was a great experience for me, you know, being around the, some of the best players in the country at that age. By the time Johnson was 19, he made his debut in the English Premier League with Blackburn Rovers. After playing in England for the better part of nine seasons, Johnson came back across the Atlantic to join the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. His transatlantic travels were not necessarily easy for him at first. You know, my mum wanted me to go to school and focus more on my education, you know, as a lot of uh, mothers do over here. And, uh, you know, she wanted me to experience that. And I was obviously more intrigued with the football and sport and growing up in the sport so uh, we, we were going back and forth in England and I'd come over here and I'd be crying but wanting to go back to England again but you know it was uh, it was good for me uh, you know it worked out well for me. After Fort Lauderdale Johnson spent the last year and a half with the New York Cosmos so he certainly knows what to expect out of the NASL and it's against that backdrop that he finds himself energized by what's happening on and off the pitch in Jacksonville. I'm really excited. We've got a great bunch of players, um, you know, a great coach and staff. Uh, everyone's philosophy going forward is uh, brilliant here and, you know, I'm, I'm really excited and there's a lot of positive energy around it and especially in the, in the city, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that are interested in everywhere. I just went to go buy a phone the other day and randomly the guy was like, oh, you play for the Armada? I was like, no way, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm awesome. getting, uh, yeah, I was getting uh, recognised already. So, you know, it's, it's something that's growing over here and, it's definitely going to be something exciting for the city. As for his own expectations, Johnson welcomes the role of being one of the principal goal scorers for the Armada. It's a part he's happy to play. It's a lot of pressure for me myself, but you know I want to take it on and you know I practice every day as hard as I possibly can. This is pre-season now, so we're sort of getting ourselves ready for the season. But uh, there's a lot of focus involved in um, you know practicing everything you can every day on a day-to-day -day basis. So shooting and. Being the, being the first in the running and being the first in training and everything like that, so. As you heard Jamal mention, he started at the age of nine with the Manchester United Academy. He made the debut in the Premier League with the Blackburn Rovers 11 years ago. 25 career goals, and he has plenty of NASL experience, having played for both the Fort Lauderdale Strikers and most recently, the New York Cosmos. Coming up, we'll go back into Bob's boot room with Bob Veal. Take a closer look at the tactical formations that you can expect to see at Armada matches this year. We'll also hear from head coach Jose Luis Villarreal as he talks about the team coming together before their big day out on the pitch. Stick around for more Armada kickoff. Parents, this is your last week to get the kids into the Real Madrid clinics Monday through Friday at the Westside Soccer Club on Ortega Boulevard. 
5 to 8 p.m. each night with the world-class coaching from Real Madrid Foundation and Jacksonville Armada staff. $180. Again, this is the last week of these very exciting clinics. Each week we spend a minute with a future opponent of the Jacksonville Armada. This week we head up I-75 to Atlanta where the Silverbacks await. The club was founded in 1998 and played in the A-League and later the USL. They lost to the Seattle Sounders in the USL Championship in 2007. After a two-year hiatus, they joined the NASL in 2011, enjoying some good early success. In 2013, they won the spring season before falling 1-0 to the Cosmos in the championship. Last season was a tumultuous one for Atlanta on and off the pitch. They won just six matches and finished the fall season last in the NASL table. The league took over ownership of the club and is now seeking a new owner for Atlanta. It currently plays at Atlanta Silverbacks Park, a 5,000-seat stadium. The Armada will first visit Silverbacks Park on May the 16th. The inaugural match is approaching and so is the North American Soccer League season. There will be plenty of firsts for the Armada this year and for head coach Jose Luis Villarreal. We caught up with coach at practice this week to get his thoughts on the upcoming season. The team is doing well. We are going the right way. The players are understanding the system of play that we plan. And well, now we are days away from playing our first important exhibition game against a team that will play in the MLS. But we also still evaluating players. The group of professionals that we already have in the club already know the way I work and train and our way of play. And at the same time, we're still evaluating and looking at players because we are looking to fill in some positions. I always say I don't like to give out too much information, but we want a team that sacrifices a team that moves in blocks, a team that goes and generates important things from midfield forward. But at the same time, when we lose the ball, the team knows how to transition defensively. I'm relaxed. I'm happy. Since June 1st that I came to the United States, we have done a lot of work. Not only myself or my coaching staff, but everyone in general. I see that Everyone at the club works a lot. For example, the other day I went to see Corinthians and Fluminense and I saw how the people of the club carried our team flag in the stands. I value that very much. Every week we get technical. We go into the boot room. Here's Bob Veal and Christy Andauer. Thanks, Cole. We go from one coach to another as we welcome in Coach Bob Veal. Bob, last week we briefly talked about formations, but why don't we get into the difference between offensive formation and defensive formation? Yeah, it's, last week I spoke about our expectation was that Amada would play 4-3-3. Four, three, three. four at the back, three in the midfield, three at the front with the center front guy dropping back. But... Um, there will be occasions when we want to play defensively um, and we're going, and that depends where we're going and where we're playing. If we're playing an away game, we might want to shut that team out. If, um, if they're a really strong field, a strong team that want to press us forward, then we will put more people behind the ball. And the formation we'll be looking at defensively is a five at the back, So your five central defenders here would take four in the midfield and then the one lonely guy in their half. So what we try and do is as they get the ball, we drop back nine players behind the ball. We leave this one person up front that we can uh, slot the ball to when we, we get it back. So he runs around on his own and we drop nine players behind the ball. Now it depends where you are in the season as to whether you play this formation. West Bromwich Elvin played it very well when they went to Everton this week. West Brom's thought was we need to come out with at least a point. So they closed Everton down. Everton could not penetrate this five or the nine at the back behind the ball. And so West Bromwich went away with a point a zip-zip draw. So what we do is 
that we load the backfield here, and then if we need to break, we can break on the flanks, or this guy can go wide, and we pr can bring another person at a midfield if we need to break. But the basic defensive formation is a five, four, and a one at the front. And now offensive, how does that look? The offensive um, formation would be that you've got to get people forward. You've got to get them behind. So if somebody plays this game against us and plays the five at the back, the offense must get people behind the back five. We must draw them out. So we would move our midfield down. We would overlap our fullbacks, take on this guy on the, the side of the field, go round him and try and get to the byline and pass it back to our people running forward. So we're trying to get behind their back nine. And this weekend, with the two games we watched at, um, at Everbank Field, the Germans did this very well, got people behind our back five, which caused the other teams all sorts of problems. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bob. We'll be with you next week. Thanks, Paul. Christy. Christy, Bob, thanks. When we come back, we'll be joined by our analysts to discuss their expectations for the Armada this year and what a win over the Philadelphia Union would mean. Stick around. More Armada kickoff straight ahead. The Armada FC's social rewards program benefits all users on social media. Just mention the Armada to receive tokens that later can be used for merchandise and exclusive discounts. Each week, we will pick a random winner and prize. This week's prize is an official Armada polo, and the winner is Lisa Robson. Congratulations. We'll be contact you to claim your prize. Keep up with the Armada via social rewards for a chance to be the next lucky winner. And now let's head over to our weekly analyst roundtable. Cole? All right, thank you, Christy. Well, it's time again for our weekly analyst roundtable, and we are pleased to welcome in Andy Kidd, David Hayes, and Mauricio Ruiz. Yep. Guys, let's first talk about this first match, the inaugural match between the uh, Armada and the Philadelphia Union. What's more important, Mauricio, for the Armada, a performance or a result here? Uh, I think the fans want to see competition a little bit. I think they're understanding that it's a first-year team. The team has just gotten started. The players are just now getting signed. So the players want to see, is there a talent? Is there a little bit of a, uh, is, is there going to be a show placed on the field? So a little bit of competition. Are, do they fare well against an MLS team or not? Uh, but they're really trying to see if there's a competition level to it. David, will the score matter? Um, I don't think it will. I think a performance is what they need. Yeah. I, I, th I think a result will come. I mean, you can play bad soccer, kickball, and win a game. But I think the fans want to see attractive soccer. Right. You have an identity, and I think that's the key. Andy, you're a Jacksonville native. Still, you see, a, even if it's a 1-0 victory, if you beat an MLS side, it means something. <laughs> there is some pride to that. You know, I was here when we... You know, we had the Cyclones. I remember having a pennant of having the team in in my room from back in the day. So there is some, you know, some Jacksonville pride. You'd like to see your professional team go out and do well. You don't want to see a 5 nothing game, you know, a loss. Um, but uh, if you can make it competitive, maybe get a couple goals, uh, I think the, the fans, you know, aren't exactly looking for a win, but they certainly wouldn't mind it. If, uh, it wouldn't hurt. We, we, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Never hurts to win. Fans would like that. David, uh, this is the first year for this club. First time these guys are playing together, they've been training, but they're still adding players as we go along here. What's most likely to lag behind early on? I think getting it right as a whole, as as, as a, a organization, you know, from you know, appearances, you know, players, travel, everything as a whole. San Antonio did it in two years, so you know, I'm hoping that you know the Armada get it right the first year. But it's very, uh, it's not in their favor to get it right the first year. What about on the field, Mauricio? As a coach, you've tried to put guys together yeah. in the, the college level. What about here? I, I think you're trying to find the right individuals that fit your style. And while you're trying to do that, you're going to fail a little bit. So I think the coaching staff here, they have that in, you know, they have a tall, tall order to have a mix of youth players, experienced players, new NSL players. So I think if they can unite the group in the, in the first year, get a, get a real chemistry going on, I think it will be, it'll be a success for them because they know they know what they can build on for the further years. So Andy, sounds this is about setting the atmosphere and the expectation. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. And on the field, you know, my sense is that, you know, going forward sometimes takes a little bit longer. Uh, finding those right combinations, right. those right guys that work together and work off each other better. 
Uh, whereas defensively, if you can find four guys that it, you know are blue-collar guys and aren't, don't mind doing the dirty work, and you've already got Gallardo in the, the goal, so you know you, you might see the attack take a little longer to come together just because it's so many new guys gelling together. Where you know defensively, just in my experience, that seems to come along a little quicker. The Florida Cup matches were paid, uh, played uh, last weekend here in Jacksonville. David, what did you learn in general? What, what was something that stood out to you about the, those? Uh, four uh, clubs are about those two matches. Well, the fans. I mean, there's so many fans here, and I think that if the Mar Armada do it right, that that they'll come on board with the, with the good performances every week. You know, um, mm -hmm. because you see the the fan base there. They're excited about it. They're right. there. I mean, you know, Everbank was pretty full. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people there, and that's what you'll see. So if they can put it together, they're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fans at the games. Andy. Yeah. No, I was uh, mentioning earlier these. You know, and I came to the game with my dad in 94 at Wilson Park. There were 6,000 fans there to see the U.S. national team play Moldova. The national team was here and we had 6,000 fans. And now we have four teams come in that may not have a ton of ties to the Jacksonville area, and we have over 7,000 fans there. Uh, I think that's a great sign for Jacksonville and the support level, you know, the level of support we're going to give soccer here. Mauricio Ruiz, David Hayes, Andy Kidd, thanks so much. More to come when we come back. Armada kickoff rolls on. If you want just a little taste of the Armada and aren't ready for a full season ticket, grab your spring season half pack. Tickets on the half pack start at just $12 per match and include the matches against the Philadelphia Union and the entire spring season. Call 844 Armada or online at armadafc.com. We are getting very close to the start of the inaugural season for the Jacksonville Armada and that inaugural match on February 7th against Philadelphia. It has been exciting to see the Armada come this far. And I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, they look like on the pitch. Absolutely. Just like the fans, I've been able to see this team grow from nothing to almost a full roster. So it's very exciting. And we expect some more player signings coming in Absolutely. the near future as well. And uh, everybody, I think, from the hardcore soccer fan to the casual sports fan who just wants to know, hey, what is this going to do for Jacksonville? What's it going to look like out there? Uh, we'll have our first taste of it against the Union. And what exactly is a soccer field going to look like at the grounds? So yeah, Something we'll <laughs> certainly be keeping an eye on and we'll be Absolutely. looking at in the future Absolutely. as well. All right, reminder, you can catch Armada Kickoff every Friday, 11 o'clock right here on CW17. And be sure to tune in to the Armada Soccer Show, Sports Radio 930, every Friday at 3 with Bob Beal and myself. Get the very latest on the Armada. I'm Cole Pepper. I'm Christiane Nauer. We'll see you guys next week.